Well, good morning, everyone, once again. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice, and we will be glad in it. This I recall to mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. His compassion fail not. It is new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to him, trust in him, and he will do it. For we know that God calls it all things, the good and the bad, to work together for good, to those who love him, to those who are called, according to his predetermined plan. If you will, open your Bibles to the book of Job. Open your Bibles to the book of Job. We'll continue in our study of unjust suffering. And we're doing a survey of the book of Job. And I hope I can only do a survey, but there is so much to be taught about suffering in the book of Job. We learn from the book of Job that when we suffer, we don't always suffer because we are doing something we're not supposed to be doing. Sometimes we will suffer because we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Job was a mature believer, and this mature believer uh, faced unjust uh, suffering. And we have learned that suffering is unjust when you are suffering while making good decisions. In verse 1 of uh, the book of Job, we see Job was a man of integrity. He was a man of integrity. Uh, his character was that of being blameless. He was upright. He feared God. He respected God. He submitted to God's will. Uh, he, 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 he turned away from evil and God had blessed Job and had put a hedge of protection around him, his family, and all his possession. But Satan did not like that and he uh, uh, accused Job of not being real and not being sincere in his service to God. Satan uh, went before God accusing Job of only serving God for the blessing. In other words, Job loved the blessing more than the blesser. And God had no reason to inflict suffering on Job because Job will live in the spiritual life. And and but Satan uh, uh, saw Job as a threat to his program in the world. And whenever you're growing to spiritual maturity and you're learning, thinking, and applying the Word of God, you are a threat to say program in the world. Satan don't care about those who he already have. He care about those believers that he do not have because they're living the spiritual life. They're learning, they're thinking, they're applying the word of God to every era of their lives. And as a result, that believer uh, uh, can make a historical impact uh, in the world, but also on his nation, also on his family, on his community, and, and say he's gonna do everything he can uh, to get uh, that believer to abandon uh, his walk uh, with God. And sometimes Satan uses the things that we go through uh, to get us to abandon God, like losing a loved one, like losing all of our um, possession, like losing our health. Uh, those uh, by being treated um, unjustly. And he will use those situations to get us to question the goodness of God and the love of God. But God will use that same, those same situation to strengthen our faith and to develop our character and teach us to trust and rely upon his sovereignty. We studied the sovereignty of God in the past, and we saw that sovereignty means that God is in charge and that nothing happens unless he sends it or, or he allows it. But he used all things to further his plan. Even bad things he used to further his plan. Another thing we learned from Job chapter 1 and 2 is that 
good uh, 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 um, good things, not only good things happen to believers, sometimes bad things happen uh, um, to believers uh, and they have nothing to do with their bad decision. Um, in Job chapter one and, and two, we saw a uh, different uh, disaster testing in Job's life and we saw how he dealt with those uh, testing. He dealt with those testing in faith and he maintained his personal love for God no matter what loss uh, he had in his life. He maintained his love for God. Now, before we uh, continue looking at, um, uh, I wanted to look at Job's friend because Job's friend after seeing all that Job was going through, um, his friends are going to accuse him of having sin in his life. Uh, and instead of bringing him comfort, uh, they did not bring him comfort. They made things even worse because they accused Job and said, Job, you, 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 you must have got sin in your life. And that is the reason that you are, are suffering. Uh, but they were wrong in their assessment of Job. Um, situation. Job was not suffering because he was making bad decisions. And we saw that some reason why we suffer, can, he, can any of you tell me the, the reason why we suffer as believers in Jesus Christ? We know one type of suffering is unjust uh, suffering. Uh, Job is being, his faith is being, and his character is being tested through trial. But what are some other reasons uh, we suffer? What are some other reasons why we as a uh, believer suffer in the world? Anybody? What are some other reasons we suffer? <laughs> okay, not listening, not believing. That's good. That's good. Not believing, not listening to God. And that could be a uh, 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 divine discipline. Okay, so as a believer, you're either suffering. Be Go ahead, Hawkins. I saw. Oh, you had your hand up. No. Okay. So some of the reason why we suffer is divine discipline, uh, and divine discipline comes directly from God. Divine discipline comes directly from God. But before divine discipline happened, a lot of time we suffer because of our own bad decisions. You know, we suffer. That's a, actually the number one reason why we suffer as believers, because we don't have many believers that are really taking the spiritual life very, very seriously. Not many believers are taking, learning, thinking and applying and believing God's word very seriously. So a lot of their suffering, majority of their suffering is a result of their own bad decision, their own negative volition towards the principles of the word of God. Uh, but that's not the only reason. The, only, the other reason is the divine discipline part. So because I'm making bad decision, negative toward God's word, uh, then God has to inflict suffering on me called divine discipline to get me to become serious about learning thinking, believing, and applying the principles of the Word of God. So this morning, what I want to do, I want to give you about 12 other reasons why we suffer as believers. So the first reason we suffer is we suffer for because of self-induced misery. Go to uh, Proverbs 14, verse 30. So the first reason we suffer is called self-induced misery. This is the suffering that we bring on ourselves because we're making decision that is contrary to the plan of God for our life, decision that is contrary to uh, uh, the principles of the word. Proverbs 14.30. Proverbs um, uh, 14.30. Can I get someone to read, please? Proverbs 14.30. A tranquil heart is life to the body, but jealousy is rottenness to the body. Okay. A trans a trans tranquil heart is life to the body, 
but pa uh, passion is rotting into the bone. What do your translations say? Jealousy. Okay. All right. So, so you you think about you know uh, a person who is jealous, do not really enjoy the happiness of God, and that is self-induced misery. They're bringing misery on themselves because they are choosing to be jealous. Okay, so that is, and then you go to Galatian uh, chapter six. Go to Galatian chapter six. Speaking of self-induced misery. If we choose not to forgive, if we choose not to forgive, the Bible commands us uh, that just as God has forgiven you, so should you forgive. So if I don't forgive those who wrong me, then I'm going to bring misery on myself as a result of choosing not to forgive. So I'm making a bad decision when I make a decision that is contrary to the plan of God for my life as a believer. Uh, Galatian, uh, look at six. Six, uh, look at verse seven. Verse seven. Anybody? Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also be. So if I sow bad seed, in other words, if I make bad decisions, then the consequence for making bad decision is I'm going to receive something bad. In other words, I'm going to bring suffering or misery on myself through the decision uh, that I make. And that's why it's so important for us to develop wisdom uh, through learning the word of God and making learning a priority because our life, we should line up our decision with the principle of the word. Uh, and we can't blame anybody for what we have created through just making decision that is contrary to the plan and the will of God. And so that's self-induced misery. And then uh, the second reason uh, uh, we suffer is in Hebrews chapter, uh, actually Proverbs 3, verse 11 and 12. Go to Proverbs 3, verse 11 and 12. Proverbs 3, verse 11 and 12. We suffer because of divine discipline. Proverbs 3, verse 11 and 12. My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord, although his reproof or his correction. For whom the Lord loved, he reproved, even as a father correct the son in whom he delights. So how do God teaches us to respect authority, uh, his authority and his plan and his will for our life? He used discipline or he inflicts some type of pain on us so that we can turn to him and be serious about uh, uh, learning his word and applying his word. But before discipline, God always gives us a grace period a period where he allow us the opportunity to correct ourselves. And then when we will not correct ourselves, then God have to correct us. Go to uh, 1 Corinthian. 1 Corinthian. First Corinthian uh, chapter 2, 3. So whenever we would not correct ourselves, then God has to correct because he has a plan for our life and that plan is designed to bring about blessing in our life and the only way to bless us and yet uh, 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 maintain holy and maintain right, his righteousness, God has to uh, discipline. If you look at uh, uh, look at verse, uh, what did I say? Oh, actually, it's First Corinthians eleven. Is it eleven? Yeah, it's eleven. Go to First Corinthians eleven. Look at verse um, verse thirteen. Th uh, I'm sorry, thirty-one. Verse thirty-one, thirty-one and thirty-two. But if we judge ourselves rightly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord so that we would not be condemned along with the world. So here we see that 
if we judge ourselves, and judging ourselves simply means if we make bad decisions and we immediately confess our sins to God, then God has no reason to discipline us for that sin or those sins. He has no reason to discipline us. So anything that come in our life, any suffering that come in our life after we have restored fellowship is suffering for blessing. It is a testing of our faith. It's to develop our character. We're not being disciplined because we're making bad decisions because we have correct ourselves. But whenever we don't correct ourselves, meaning we continue to remain out of fellowship, we continue to be negative toward learning and applying the presence of the word to life, then at some point, God has to inflict suffering on us. And his suffering still comes in three categories, warning, intensive, and then dying discipline. Warning discipline is when your life is falling apart, nothing going right, there's no happening, there's no peace, and you're living in sin and you're not happy living in it. And, and that could be a warning uh, type of discipline. But if we correct ourselves, then that warning discipline turns into blessing. God uses it to bless us, but if we choose not to confess and continue to live in it, then God has to intensify um, the suffering until we confess our sin and return back to him. And then that last uh, that last uh, stage of discipline is God calling us home uh, prematurely. And so that's divine discipline. Now go to Hebrews chapter uh, 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Now, when God disciplines us or inflicts pain on us because we are making bad decisions, he does not do it because he hates us or he don't love us. He do it because he, he actually, his discipline is a demonstration of his love toward us because he could just allow us to uh, continue sin and miss out on the fantastic blessing that he had in store for us, but instead, he do everything that is necessary to alert us of our need to restore fellowship with him and resume our spiritual life. And verse uh, 11 tells us why God uh, disciplined us. In verse 11, uh, all discipline for the moment seem not to be joyful, but sorrowful or painful. Yet to those who have been trained by it afterward, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. So here we see that uh, all discipline uh, seems to be uh, painful at the moment, uh, uh, but the purpose of discipline is to uh, uh, bring about righteousness in our life. Then look back at verse 10, verse 10 of chapter 12. For they discipline us, speaking of our parents, for a short time have seemed best to them. But he, God, disciplined us for our good so that we may share in his holiness. See, that is the plan of God. That is the reason God keep you and I alive after salvation is that we be like him in our conduct. And sometimes it is necessary to discipline us to accomplish the objective of sanctifying us, setting us apart from sin so that he can use us for his holy purposes. And so God disciplined us so that we can be like him. And so sometimes, uh, 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 even though it hurt him to inflict pain on us, he does it because he is trying to make us more like him. Another reason why we suffer is we suffer to, be, to bring glory and honor to God. Go to Job chapter 9, um, John, the Gospel of John. Chapter 9, verse 1 through 3. Sometimes we suffer to glorify God. We suffer to glorify God. John 9, verse 1 through 3. Can I get a volunteer to read, please? He passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he would be born blind? Jesus answered, It was neither that this man sinned nor his parents, 
but it was so that the works of God might be displayed in them. Amen. And so here we see that some people are born uh, blind. And, and here we see that not all blindness or all uh, uh, physical ailments is a result of the sin of the parents or the sin of the individual. Sometimes God allowed people uh, to be born a certain way to demonstrate his power and to bring glory uh, um, to himself. But we know that all uh, um, um, uh, sicknesses was a result of Adam's sin. Uh, but God will allow certain things to happen to bring glory uh, to himself. Uh, in the book of Hosea, another reason uh, God allow us to suffer, go to um, uh, Hosea. Well, you don't have to go there because I have to teach the whole book to illustrate this truth on why God allowed Hosea. If many of you know the story of Hosea, God told Hosea to marry a woman by the name of Gomer. And, and that man, that woman brought a lot of suffering in that man's life. And, and, and what is what is some of the suffering, Hawkins, that uh, Hosea White brought into his life? Uh, betrayal. Betrayal. She betrayed him. And how did she betray him? Adultery. Adultery. Okay. She 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 cheated on him. She had three children on this man. And God knew that. In advance, that Hosea's wife would be unfaithful to him, and the suffering that that unfaithfulness would actually bring. He knew that in advance, but he did not coerce Hosea's wife uh, free will. She had made a, a choice uh, to seek happiness and, and satisfaction and many different relationships and many different men. But why did God allow that man to suffer like that? Because God wanted to use his experiences to illustrate truth. He allowed him to go through that to use his experience to illustrate truth. And what was the truth that God illustrated through allowing Hosea, because he's the one, he the one told him to marry the woman. He said, Hey, I want you to go marry a woman of harlotry. And 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 he married this woman and she cheated on him. And, and and so what was the truth that God was illustrating through his experience? Anybody know? The unfaithfulness of God's people to him. Oh, say it again. The unfaithfulness of God's people to him. Okay. Just as your wife was unfaithful, Israel have been unfaithful to me. And when Israel is unfaithful to me, I'm going to discipline Israel. But after discipline, I'm still going to fulfill my promises. In other words, my love for Israel never fail, even though Israel may fail me. And so God allowed this believer uh, to suffer, uh, uh, to illustrate truth. And sometimes God may allow you to suffer, to illustrate his truth. Uh, uh, um, and so there's many reasons. All right, another uh, uh, reason God allow us to suffer is go to Hebrews 5, verse 8. Sometimes God allow us to suffer to teach us to be obedient. He allow us to suffer to teach us to be obedient. Hebrews 5, verse 8. Anybody? To read, please. Although he was Okay, so this, this scripture here is talking about Jesus learned obedience to the things uh, that he that he suffered. He learned to obey God through the suffering in his life. All right. Um, and we already learned this, taught about this. Another reason we suffer is, is keep our pride down. To keep our pride down. We saw that in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7, that God allowed uh, 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 Paul uh, to suffer to keep him from being prideful, to keep him from relying on himself and his own ability, to keep him dependent on God, and sometimes God will allow us to suffer uh, to teach us to depend on him uh, and, and not be 
self-confident. And so to keep down pride. And then in 1 Peter 1, verse 7 through 8, another re reason we suffer is to develop our faith, to develop our faith, to build spiritual muscles, to develop our faith. Uh, 1 Peter 1, 7 through 8, anybody in a volunteer, anybody there where you can read it, to develop faith. 1 Peter 1, 7 through 8. Okay. So your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, can be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, believe him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Amen. And so God will use suffering and things that we go through to develop um, our, our faith, all right? Um, and also, if you go to uh, 2 Timothy 2, verse 8 and 9, another reason we suffer is to witness for Christ, to witness for Christ. 2 Timothy 2, 8 and 9, anybody? I'm going to run right through these, so I'll, let's just read them. I won't expound much on them. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, descendant of David, according to my gospel, for which I suffered hardship to imprisonment of criminals, but the word of God is not in prison. For this reason I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Jesus Christ, and with it eternal glory. Amen. So Paul said, hey, I went through what I went through so that I may witness for Christ. And sometimes God will allow us to suffer so that we can witness and that we can comfort others with the same comfort that God uh, have comforted us with when we were suffering. Um, and then in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8 through 11, uh, we suffer to manifest the fruit of the Spirit, to manifest the fruit of the, fruit of the Spirit. Remember, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, uh, uh, self-control. And, and how do you develop those, uh, I mean, that fruit without suffering? Sometimes we have to be put in situation that where we have to love, where we have to be patient, where we have to show self-control. And, and, and so God will allow suffering sometimes to manifest the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And then, um, I already mentioned this, in 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4, God is called the God of all comfort. He comforted us in our tribulation so that we can be able to comfort others with the comfort that he has comforted us. In other words, sometimes God will allow you to suffer to help other believers who suffer like you suffered. And then two more. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 24 through 33, sometimes God allows us to suffer to demonstrate his power and ability to get us through the suffering, to get us to rely upon his promises to demonstrate his power. So sometimes he allows us to suffer to demonstrate his power in the circumstance. 2 Corinthians Chapter 11, verse 24 through 33. And then lastly, let's go there. Psalm 119, verse 7 and 1. Psalm 119, 7 and 1. Sometimes God allow us to suffer to teach us to learn his word. Psalm 119, 7 and 1 say, it is good for me that I was afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. So here we see that sometimes God will allow us to suffer to teach us to learn his word. And so those are some reasons. As a believer, you should never uh, uh, not know why you are suffering. Because the Bible has a reason and an explanation for all suffering that 
we face in our life, but the Bible also has the solution for all suffering. When we come back, we'll continue our study of the uh, book of Job next week, and we'll be looking at uh, Job's uh, 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 friends um, uh, uh, accusing him of having sin in his life. All right, so let's stop here. Father, we're so grateful uh, for the provision that you have made for us in your word so that we may endure suffering and glorify you in it. Thank you for giving us all these reasons and these explanations through your word. Your word has an answer to all those questions that we have when we suffer. And we just pray that we will be students of your word so that we will always know uh, the reason uh, and the explanation, but also the solution for all of our suffering. Keep our minds and heart until we meet again. In Christ's name, amen. We'll take a 10-minute break and we'll come back for our second Timothy study. I am. Who has the relevant? Uh, not now. You can have some refreshments. No lot of profits. You can have some uh, snacks right there. No, with everybody else you get. Go, go back to it. Yes, I'm here. Going your own way. Yeah. yeah. I am proud of you. Thank you. 